magnetize your minis, flight stands, custom kits, and all the hobby supplies you'll need from the magnetbaron.com. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for CraftWorldElder.com. I'm Brent, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to build and run casual lists with Eldari, or maybe how to design a list to play against a very new player who's still learning the game or, or just learning maybe competitive aspects of the game. And although I know I said in a previous video that this next video is going to be our best units and how to use them, I've decided that that can wait, that in fact, this is more pressing. Eldari currently have a 67% win rate in top tournament play, which is frankly too high. And so although I think it's still totally legit for players who are new to the army or new to the hobby to be struggling a little bit with their Eldari, I get a lot of emails from people who are, who are like, I keep hearing that Eldari are good, but I can't win a game or I, I got my butt kicked by sisters. What do I do? I, I hear you. Uh, a lot of that has to do, Eldar remain a, a complex army to play. Some of it just has to do with unit selection. If you are in that situation, ask yourself, do I have a lot of vehicles? Uh, do do I own a Wraith Knight? Do I have some Fire Prisms? If you're if you're running a bunch of Aspect Warriors and Guardians, that's probably why you're losing. I will get to that video. I at some point GW is going to do some balancing in September. I'm probably going to put that one off until after uh, GW has updated points. So this video is instead aimed at you, more veteran and experienced players who maybe have been playing Space Elves for uh, a long time and you suddenly find yourself in the situation of, uh, at least in casual play or your, your local club, perhaps struggling to lose a game or not wanting to uh, ruin the experience of a new player who is just come to the hobby and is not going to get much out of being tabled on turn two without killing more than three of your models. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what I think the, the big difference is between casual and competitive play and how to think about that. And then I'm gonna talk about, I actually think there are two types of casual play. I will address both of those. And then we'll talk about uh, principles of list construction with an eye towards those different types of casual play, uh, what sorts of units to stay away from, but also other other types of considerations, right? I, th I think there's there's a lot to think about when you build a casual list. Uh, and how those goals differ from building a competitive list and how to make it a fun and valuable experience for both players that does not require you to uh, intentionally make mistakes or just forget that your units can do things or worst of all, just play badly uh, intentionally. So, so here we go. We'll start with uh, the difference between casual and competitive. 40k because any conversation about what it means to build a casual list obviously has to start with uh, you know what is a casual list so let's talk about what it's not a competitive list in 40k is a list essentially designed to win the game before it starts so you start by thinking how does an army score points well i have to hold objectives on the table i have to do all of these secondary missions some of which involve killing my opponent's units uh, one of the most effective way ways to play eldari at the moment really is just to devastate your opponent's list. That is not how all armies in 40k work, even though that might seem intuitive because it's a war game. But one of the ways, probably the best way to win as an Eldar player is to run something that's going to hit uh, really fast and really hard and just take away your opponent's tools. So competitive lists try to win the game essentially before it starts while taking into consideration how you score points and also the meta. The meta is like what everybody else who's playing competitively is running. How can I work around that, undermine that, defy people's expectations in ways that will win me games? You can sum it up like this. In competitive 40K, you're trying to win the game maybe even before it starts. And before we move on to casual play, I just want to say for those of you who, you know, maybe hate competitive 40K, there's nothing wrong with competitive 40K. If both people want to play the game that way and are getting a big kick out of doing it, and I'm telling you that thousands and thousands of people love to play 40K this way. They have so much fun playing highly tactical 40K and really thinking in the same way that you might build a deck for a game like Magic about how I'm going to outbuild and outmaneuver and outthink my opponent at the table and ultimately outscore them. It There's nothing wrong with playing 40k that way it's a really fun way to play the game as borne out by the fact that thousands of people have tons of fun playing the game with one another that way if you don't want to play the game that way 
that's okay. And the fact that you might not be interested in putting that amount of time into thinking about list construction or the minutia of rules, you can totally respect that and think that it's a fine way to play without wanting to do it yourself. Uh, that's fine. And I say this as somebody who, when I got back into 40K at the very beginning of 8th edition, sort of poo-pooed uh, competitive play. I, I was wrong to do so. Uh, I didn't... I mean, having had a few editions off, a lot of editions I hadn't played since 3rd, and only having been a fairly casual player back in, in 2nd and 3rd ed, I just... I didn't really get it. I didn't really understand it. And it was kind of intimidating. So I think it was just easier initially to not like it. That said, casual 40K is also a really cool way to enjoy the hobby. In casual 40K, uh, we are not trying to win the game before it starts. And I think that that is the one fundamental biggest difference. In casual 40K, uh, if we if we care about who wins or loses at all, and I think most players still do, lots of people say, I don't even care who wins and loses. I just want it to be a fun uh, story at the table or whatever. And I know you people exist and I respect you and I think that's cool, but I think most people even playing casual 40K, they're still trying to win the game. They want to win the game, but you want to feel like the game is decided not in the list construction phase or by the person who spent 22 hours watching tactics videos on YouTube and spent and you know two thousand dollars on their army you want it to, just, to be decided like any other board game or whatever at the table by the decisions made at the table by two players who sort of have equally relevant tools for determining the outcome and what really mucks this up is when one player shows up with a competitive list and the other player shows up with a casual list and there's just a huge imbalance in expectations and attitudes. And that can lead to nobody having fun. So step one to having fun playing Warhammer 40K, communicate with your opponent, make sure you both want to and plan to play the same kind of 40K before the game begins. Oh, and for your competitive players, there's nothing wrong with casual 40K. I have occasionally heard uh, competitive players say things like, well, casual 40K is what people who are not good at it call 40K or something like that. And that's crap, right? That's absolutely ridiculous. Yes, it's true. People who play a lot of very tactical, complex, competitive 40K and they're going to grand tournaments and playing 10 games a month or, or, or whatever, you, you probably do have more competitive skills and the minutia of movement and target selection. And yeah, sure. But that doesn't mean that the way that you're playing 40K is better or that casual 40K is just for people who like haven't gotten good yet. It's a totally different set of priorities. In different, in different ways that people are enjoying the game. I love playing casual 40K. I like to be able to run highly thematic lists that would have no chance in a highly competitive environment on boards that are like aesthetically interesting, but do not have a uh, minutely positioned mirror terrain consisting only of ruins with opaque first floors to make sure that game balance is intact. Like, Sometimes I want to throw some dice and tell an interesting story and run an army that's just jet bikes or something. They're both they're both great ways to play. But at the moment, as a Craft Worlds player, or just an Eldari player in general, because that's not now what space elves are, it's pretty easy to end up with a list, even if you're not a highly competitive tournament player, if you just kind of know what units are, quote, good right now, it's pretty easy to end up with a ridiculously powerful list simply by owning a Wraith Knight and having a couple of Fire Prisms. So uh, we're going to dig down on how to make a list for casual play that's that's fun for, for both opponents. And it is not as simple. It is not as simple as just don't take a Wraith Knight and don't take any Fire Prisms. There's more to it. But don't take a Wraith Knight and don't take any Fire Prisms. Uh, and, and in order to unpack that, though, let's start with, I think there are two types of casual play. Okay, so I, I think that there's one type of casual play is casual play against people who, although it's a casual game, are nevertheless 40k veterans. They may have been playing for years. They may have been playing for many, many editions. They may have very, very large collections. They may collect a lot of different armies and know a lot about the game. But when they do their list construction... And, and the type of games they're interested in playing, they are not, in fact, focused on the most efficient ways to win. They're interested in telling some sort of thematic story. They're interested in uh, 
maybe simply running the models that they most enjoy painting. For a space elf player, this might look like, you know, if you're, if you play Sam Hahn, maybe you just, you really want to run 27 wind riders and six shining spears and three viper jet bikes, or maybe literally your whole army is, is on bikes. And you might even as a casual player, it's not just that you don't think at all about tactics. You might have some sort of general sense of how the army is going to score or what it's going to do, but you're not seeking to optimize and maximize scoring. And your unit selection is limited on the front end by stuff that works thematically with your army. The first thing you're paying attention to, probably when you do that kind of army selection, is something other than uh, what's going to win you games. You know, maybe it's the models you like the best. Maybe it's a theme like Simhan jet bikes or whatever. But these types of casual players are still people that you can count on to know all of the stratagems for their army, uh, or, or you should. If you're playing a lot of 40K and you're a casual player, and you, you don't know the six stratagems for your army and you're constantly fumbling to, to look, the, like learn them. It's more fun for everybody. It was totally excusable in previous editions when there were a billion of the things. But but at this point, uh, our army rules are limited enough that if, if you're playing 40K regularly, especially with the same list, it's, it's, it's reasonable to expect you to have a general handle on your rules. It just makes the game go a lot faster. But these types of casual players are people who uh, are not going to be vulnerable to gotcha moments in the rules. You don't have to remind them of their own stratagems. And I think that this is most casual players. And that creates one set. There's, there's one way you play against those people. The other type of, quote, casual play is, isn't really so much casual as uh, like beginner Warhammer. It's games against people who just haven't played very much. Now, maybe they have a big collection. Maybe they've been collecting for a really long time. Maybe they've even been in the hobby for a really long time, but they're part of the one to three games a year crowd. So in the last 10 years, maybe they've played they've played 20 or 30 games of Warhammer, but like some of those were in 8th ed and some of those were in 9th ed and they've played one to two games of 10th edition and they kind of understand the rules. And those players typically too, unless they're watching a ton of YouTube videos about it, they haven't mastered the minutia of primary scoring versus secondary scoring or whatever. And, and these more like beginner, at least beginner with reference to, they, they might be long time, they might not be Warhammer the hobby beginners, but in terms of 10th edition 40K, they, they may be, even if they don't think of themselves that way. And they, they are not going to know their stratagems necessarily, and they're not going to know the universal stratagems, and they aren't necessarily really going to understand the rules. And I think you need to think about um, which type of casual 40K that you're playing, that, because that's going to determine, uh, I think, how, you, how and what you prioritize. But the, the first priority, regardless, is that everybody has a good time. So how can you, if you are a a competitive player with a, a, a good collection and you, you could simply choose to auto win these games, how do you instead approach these games in a way that is fun for everybody? And by the way, we're assuming that these players have not said to you, I really want to get into highly competitive 40K, so I want you to bring your best, most awesomest tournament list and table me on turn two. I've had people say that to me. And if that is not what we're talking about. We're talking about situations in which we're taking it down a notch to play a different kind of 40K with uh, what is currently the most powerful army in the game against people who just want to have some fun or, or learn the hobby. So I'm going to start with a big, uh, a, a big don't do this, a big no-no. Sometimes I, I, I have observed uh, competitive players will deal with a situation like this by showing up with what could essentially be a tournament list um, or sometimes they'll be like, well, it's not a tournament list because I took out one of the two Wraith Knights and replaced it with some Wraith Lords. It's my friend, it is still a tournament list. Um, but they, they, you show up with a very powerful list and then you, you just don't play as hard. You like, you make some mistakes. You maybe forget to shoot with this unit, uh, or if you if you start really winning on the end of turn one, you'll just like forget to put fortune on your wraith knight. That is not a good way to handle this situation. For one thing, um, you don't really get anything out of it if if you are playing that way, and if anything, you're practicing bad habits. And B, I actually think it's kind of 
disrespectful. Like we've all been in the situation probably where we're really, maybe even in a competitive game, we're really destroying somebody who's not only losing badly, but clearly not having a good time. And you, you do start to like, well, maybe I won't remember that I have my detachment rerolls, or maybe I'll just forget to put fortune on the Wraith Knight. Like, there's a there's a place where you can get in a game where maybe you start doing stuff like that. I'm not saying that it's it's there's no circumstance in which it might be appropriate uh, if the other person is really not having fun. It's not a tournament. You're already he wants to finish the game, but you're already winning by a lot. But if you've already gotten to that point, something went wrong. So definitely don't go into some game planning that you're just going to like play badly. It's disrespectful to your opponent. It practices bad habits and you don't get anything out of it. Uh, instead, try to design a list that gives your, an oppo your opponent an authentic chance to win the game. Yeah, because remember, the fundamental principle of casual play is uh, games are decided at the table, not before the game starts. And so if like you know that you you have certain units in your collection that are um more or less game winners step one leave them home try to design a list try to design a list that your opponent has a good chance of beating and if you know that on top of just having a more powerful army in the current meta and maybe a, a bigger collection you just have better skills then design a list that will that will give yourself give yourself a challenge like don't, don't just try to design a list that is technically the competitive equal of your opponent's list you think based on what they have that's good. Like, see what happens if you give them an authentic chance of winning the game. And that, that is my single and, and biggest, most important piece of advice uh, for casual play. Try to create a situation where when you get to the game, both players have a reasonable chance of winning. Now, are there going to be some games against very new players, that second kind of casual play that I talked about, where um, it would be almost impossible for you, you to lose? Yes, uh, we'll talk about that. We're gonna, um, that, that's a little bit different. For most casual play though, step one, uh, make it possible for you to lose the game. And not like just technically possible, like, Try to set it up so uh, it's you. You feel like it's really 50-50 whether or not you can win this. Now there there can be some some obstacles. One, uh, being like being able to bring to the table the most up to date competitive builds. Being able to bring to the table a really casual build may be contingent upon having a pretty big collection. If, for example, you got into Eldar at the very beginning of 10th edition and you have just finished collecting 2,000 points of highly competitive space elves. You may just not have enough depth in your collection to leave certain models home. This is the single hardest situation to deal with. Uh, you you could, if you are playing the only models that you have and your opponent is is playing the only models they have and it's 2,000 points of not very competitive leagues of Votan, you could agree between the two of you that like, you, the Eldar player, are going to not use Fate Dice and not use your Detachment ability, and that might help a bit. And if there's absolutely no other option, you could do something like that. But in general, hopefully, uh, especially if you've been in the hobby for a while, you have enough models in your collection to instead make some different choices in what you bring. So the way the game stands now, uh, 10th edition is an edition that favors monsters and vehicles in a big way. Um, so step one is to, is to leave a lot of those home. And my advice to you is don't bring anything to the table that you think your opponent might really struggle to kill. It's very frustrating as a, a player with a less developed collection or a more casual player to feel like your opponent has units on the table that you simply cannot get rid of. It may be a little bit different if you're running Death Guard and part of the whole thing with Death Guard is you you can't kill all of them and the balancing mechanic is that they're extremely slow. Also, Death Guard are terrible, terrible right now, so I don't think this is going to be coming up for Death Guard players in a big way, but certainly as a Space Elf player, Space Elves are fragile and you should you simply shouldn't have, in, a, in casual play, you shouldn't have anything on the table that you're pretty sure your opponent just can't kill. 
Now, this might require you to know some things about your opponent's list. If uh, the casual game you're going to is, is a casual game with an opponent that you know, you kind of know what's in their collection, you've seen them at the club before, you have some sense of what they can bring, then you probably know, like, can my opponent uh, kill a Wraith Lord? Wraith Lords are interesting units in casual play right now and that nobody is bringing them for competitive play they're because they're they are a frontline unit in order to get maximum value out of a wraith lord you have to be making use of not only those heavy weapons on the shoulders because you could put those on a war walker which at range is frankly um a much better investment uh but they're also it has to be operating as a bully unit that glaive has to be a real threat to the opponent and the the wraith lord even though it's got a uh, pretty good saving throw it doesn't have an invulnerable save and now that we can no longer use as many fate dice as we want in one phase you can't like stack the rolling sixes so even i think i think they're toughness 11 but even with that like laws cannons i think are strength 12 right uh so certainly bright lances are and so um they're just not that hard to take down so they're not really durable enough for their points but in casual play if you know your opponent just doesn't have a lot of good, dedicated anti-vehicle, your Wraith Lords might actually constitute models that your opponent just can't kill. And you might show up to the game feeling like you're being reasonable and end up just annihilating them. This happened to me um, in ninth edition. I have a friend who plays uh, Dark Angels and he's a very he's been playing since second ed. He's got a beautiful army, but he's a very casual player. And I ran my Tyranids, I showed up to the game and uh, Carnifexes were not good at this point, and I thought, well, I'll bring an all Carnifex army with old one eye and all these Carnifexes, and then we'll we'll have a really good time. It'll my list will be super casual, his list will be super casual, but I just didn't really think about it, and uh, I don't know if he ever killed a Carnifex. He might have picked up one, and and he got tabled, and I just I can't, I felt pretty bad, you know, like he was a good sport about it, but he clearly did not have fun, so. It isn't just a matter of like not running the best units. It's making sure that you're not including things that you know your opponent won't be able to kill. And if you don't know who you're playing at the club, uh, and there, there's a variety of casual players with a variety of lists, favor in, instead of super durable units, favor uh, units that are trading units. This is so. Here's my here's my probably most useful piece of advice for building casual lists. Um, your opponent in a casual game, win or lose, probably will have a good time if they kill most of your models. Most casual players, and certainly new, this is definitely new of new player, uh, true of new players, nobody has a bad time at a game where they kill most of their opponent's army. So consider bringing a lot of fragile elf infantry and a lot of trading units. So uh, aspect warriors, Absolutely. All those Aspect Warriors that went back on the shelf after 9th edition ended when they were really good. Get your Aspect Warriors out. Put your Aspect Warriors on the table. Play a high-pressure trading game. Uh, don't do the, I, I'm an elf player and I hide behind everything and we're the children of the forest and we shoot you and we run away and we tee-hee-hee. -hee. Like, play an aggressive trading list. Get out your Dire Avengers. Get out your Banshees. Get out your Fire Dragons. Put those Scorpions out in front of your army. Have them jump something in your opponent's backfield, turn one, and then die. Or run a guardian swarm if your collection will uh, make it possible for you to do. Like put 60 guardians on the table. A lot of us um, back in 8th edition, guardian bombs were a thing. Where, and a little bit in ninth, where you'd bring like 20 guardians out of the webway in multiple places on the table. If you have those models, like get out your guardians. Viper jet bikes, they're, they're good. They're, they're making appearances in competitive lists because they're, they're cheap for their points. But... Nobody's going to have trouble killing a Viper. See how many freaking models you can fit into the list at whatever point level you're playing, 1,000, 2,000, whatever, um, and plan to play a, a highly aggressive, highly tradey version of 40K. And I, I guarantee you that if most of your stuff is dead at the end of the game, even if you win, and even if you win by a good margin, your opponent will still have had a good time. Now, I think one of the most fun ways to think about running this type of list, a casual list, which is going to involve uh, a lot of stuff that your opponent does kill um, and a lot of models on the table, is to think about it in terms of 
theme. And this is a great opportunity to run a highly thematic craft world list from one of the, the main craft worlds. And most of the main craft worlds right now, if you run a highly thematic list from that craft world, honestly, it will not necessarily be super competitive. Um, I think the, the maybe the best one right now go-to is Belltown because their whole thing is Aspect Warriors. And Aspect Warriors are not great right now, really. Um, there, there's some Aspect Warriors that are really good scoring tools. Warp Spiders are a really good scoring tool. Shadow Spectres are actually great. And if you are a skilled player who owns some Shadow Spectres and you know you win RTTs or finish in the last 16 of Grand Tournaments or whatever, or, or you just play very well competitively at your local club, leave your freaking Shadow Spectres at home. Um, but all the other stuff, Fire Dragons, Howling Banshees, all that stuff. Like run a run a Beltan list that is full of aspect warriors and the only uh the only armor on the list maybe is a wave serpent or two. Uh get some Phoenix Lords on the table. Like that's a really good time. It's also fun if when somebody shows up at a game and they look at your list, they already know what the story is. If they if they know a little bit about the lore. They already know what the story is. If you look at a Bell 10 list that's all Aspect Warriors, you you see, you see what is going on here. We are telling an interesting story at the table. And if you want your casual uh, Bell 10 list to be a bit more competitive because you are playing into a player who is maybe pseudo casual, uh, throw the Avatar of Kane in there. Get, um, get Fortune on it. Uh, if if you are a Sam Han player, as as I, I mentioned at the beginning of the, the video, like Wind Riders aren't bad, but they're certainly not going to piss anybody off. Uh, it's not like you can't kill Wind Riders. Anybody who can kill Space Marines can kill a Wind Rider. Bring a bunch of Wind Riders. Bring a bunch of Vipers. Run a really aggressive trading game. Your opponent will have a good time. If you play Ulthway, uh and you own like 80 Guardians, Storm Guardians, regular Guardians, fabulous go for it go freaking nuts that's a that is a great opportunity to tell a good story at the player at the table and uh enjoy a casual game now you eandon players have a little bit uh are gonna have a little bit more trouble because it what could be more eandon than bringing a wraith knight um if you own a wraith knight uh and you want to you want to play eandon i'm gonna say let's hope it's magnetized and uh don't run the wraith cannons Okay, the the Wraith Knight with the sword and shield is a is a very powerful midfield bully unit. I, I think it would be better as an Eandon player if um you in in very casual games maybe left your Wraith Knight at home and instead went with some Wraith Lords or Wraith. It's a great it's a great addition for Wraith Seers in casual play because they're certainly not making the uh the bar for competitive. Even even though Wraiths are Wraiths are good in this edition. Uh, and Andon players are in this weird place where, like, given the way things are right now with the, re with the recent nerf to, nerf to Wraith Guard, f like, full Wraith lists are are definitely not making, making it in, in the highest levels of competitive play, but most Wraith lists are still going to be probably too good for casual play, but you can mitigate this with loadout. So, um, if you run Wraith Blades, if you're going to run Wraith Guard, if you can run them with these scythes, a lot of people don't have magnetized Wraith Guard. I do. Uh, but lean into some of the weaker war gear loadouts. Like, that's your move. Run some Wraith Lords. Okay, but like, maybe don't put the Ghost Glaive on. I know there's no reason not to, but like, the reason is it's casual play. And if your Wraith Lord is magnetized and you can choose to just throw the Wraith Bone Fists on there and put it out there with a couple of Shuriken Cannons, like, great. You and in players, uh, you're, 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 the best way that you can run a Wraith host that is still going to be fun for the other player if it's a more casual game is to not choose the most optimized war gear options. Olay talk. Um, uh, so I, I think the only thing you've really got to worry about Illich Night Spear is freaking great. I, I don't think he's off the table for casual play. Uh, if you want to have that big unit of scouts with Illic that sits in your backfield and tries to keep people at bay, fine. Um, that's okay as long as you're not dom making it impossible for your opponent to get into the midfield to get near him. So, like, maybe just don't don't run the vehicles. Like, again, 
an infinite an infantry heavy LA talk list if you own a ton of rangers like maybe you own 30 rangers cool bring them all uh bring your shroud runners that's a very um a th- themed LA talk unit and after that just mix it up choose whatever choose whatever infantry you have in your collection pretty much all the space elf infantry that are not the wraith elf infantry are just great picks for casual play space elves except for the shadow specters space elves are not hard to kill uh they 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 play a trading game which is great for casual settings if you're a yanari player uh i think you need to be a little bit careful about the yinkarn which is a very very powerful unit in the hands of a skilled player i i don't think it's necessarily a no-no for casual play uh and if you if you're a newer player to the game i think your yinkarn is going to be fine but the, the teleporting ability with the Yinkarn can be very janky. I don't think it's overpowered for competitive play, but I do think it is just a... The Yinkarn is like a... It's a Ferrari. And in the hands of a skilled player, it can be both a sledgehammer and a scalpel and really hard to get rid of. So if that's you, uh, maybe when you run your, your Yinari list, your Yinkarn doesn't show up this time with your brain and the Bizarre. Otherwise, what could be more uh, thematic for the Yanari? If there's probably the only Eldari faction for whom tra- like a high volume trading play style actually makes thematic lore sense is, is the Yanari as they're trying to get themselves killed to resurrect the God of Death. But th- there's there's other stuff you can do too, right? Like um, maybe you try to run an army that's all bikes and you, you get out some of your Harlequin bikes and you... Uh, you do a Yanari build that's Drakari bikes and Harlequin bikes and Craft Worlds bikes, or maybe you run an Ulthway list where the rule is literally everything has to be some kind of guardian. Um, and so you've got some support platforms, but you don't choose the D cannon. You take the Vibro cannon, which isn't a great loadout. I have like an all citizen army 2000 point build that I, I like to get out for new players. That's like Vipers and Warwalkers and 60 Guardians and um, everything everything is a citizen soldier there are a lot of options but think about uh think about a thematic list that will tell an obvious story that your opponent will basically immediately have access to that will include uh a lot of a lot of units that your opponent will will experience the the joy of destroying and only then at the the end of the list construction process do you start thinking about how to either tune it up or tune it down to make the the competitive level of the list appropriate to the type of casual play that you are planning to do. And this is going to depend on individual opponents and individual metas. And if possible, you might even ask your opponent in advance what it is that they're running so that you can uh, put together something that is comparable. If your opponent has a demon primarch, you like you can use the avatar of Cain. If your opponent is running a highly aggressive all melee army, like uh, melee tyranids or something, make sure that your army is going to do something other than sit back and shoot, so that you know it's uh, there's a, there's a scrap fest going on. But also make sure that your list uh, does have something that it can do to take down hard targets. Like have a plan for how it's going to deal with horde infantry. Think about some of the secondary objectives that are in that deck. Like can I, do I have the speed to get to table corners uh, to, to score that particular secondary objective card? There's nothing wrong with still doing some tactical thinking in casual play. It's just in casual play, it needs to be an afterthought and it needs to be uh balanced with reference to the challenge that's going to be presented by your opponent's list and like the level of casual play and the hardest thing about casual play is is figuring because that's a wide band right is figuring out exactly what that level is but the best way to get as close as you can is to communicate with your opponent in advance because again fundamental principle of casual play who wins is decided during the game not before the game Okay, and to wrap up, let's talk about players who are very new to 40k, because I think that is a different kind of casual play than what I was just talking about. Some of the principles still apply, like they're going they're going to have a good time if they kill a lot of your models. So running a high model, uh, high trade oriented list is probably going to be um, the most fun sort of challenge you can put in, in, in front of a new player. 
But I think there are a couple of other uh, considerations too. Um, if you're playing against somebody very new, A, try to keep the point value low. In fact, if they're really new to the game, see if you can talk them into 500 point play. It is by far the best way to learn 40k, even if you're not using the balanced combat patrol rules, which are great, by the way. I really, I really like that uh, Games Workshop has released all of these combat patrols that are allegedly designed to be balanced against one another that have unique rules that are different from the main rules. But uh, a newer player at your local club or that you've connected with in some other way might have a, a collection that doesn't include exactly that current combat patrol. But a lower point value game, absolutely the best way to learn, excuse me. And in these games, uh, you need to go into the game, I think, prepared to focus as much, if you are a very experienced player, to focus as much on helping your opponent learn as on playing the game. And that might not be quite as much fun for many people, uh, but it, it is an investment in being able to play with this other player later on and enjoy uh, enjoy a more complicated game. So this means like reminding them of what the universal stratagems are. If you see an opportunity for them to use universal stratagem or, or where there's something that they obviously need to do, or you see them making an obvious mistake, like moving off of an objective, removing models such that they no longer control an objective, point it out, right? Like in, in, in a normal, here's the difference. In a normal casual game, once the game starts, you're still trying to win the game. Probably is like your, your first goal is to have fun, but you know, you're trying to win the game. Uh, when you're playing against a new player, your first priority needs to not be to win the game. It needs to be to help them help them learn 40K. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to win, but it does mean that uh, helping them get a handle on stratagems, turn order, reminding them what your units can do. In any casual 40K, you should always, and well, in any 40K, I think, you should always remind your opponent what your units can do and avoid gotcha moments. A gotcha moment is when you pull something off, not really because you've been tactically brilliant, but only because your opponent didn't know about this rule that you kind of know they didn't know about. Um, even in even in competitive 40K, don't do that. That's just bad sportsmanship. But in when we're teaching new players, it is especially important. And one of the ways you can make things a little bit easier, if you know you're going to play against a very new player, don't, don't run, don't have a, a, a wide variety of units. Like try to, in your unit selection, repeat the same units. So maybe you have an Autark and three units of Dire Avengers and a Vibro Cannon and a unit of Banshees. I, I don't know. But it, instead of instead of letting them sample uh, three or four different types of Aspect Warriors, like so that they look at the model and they already know what that model does, and that way they can focus primarily on thinking about their own stuff, which is all they're going to really be able to do anyway. But they're certainly going to find the game easier if you have fewer types of units on the table with fewer funky special rules. That said, if you're playing with a new, newer player, it is good to have like one unit that uh, scouts something that deep strikes. And so you can remind them about the, if they're ready to learn that, the deep strike bubble. There are certain sort of fundamental principles of 40K. I think um, either a pregame move or uh, an advanced deployment into no man's land or deep striking, all of those are pretty fundamental parts of the game. So you don't want to catch somebody flat-footed with that or run something really powerful that's going to do that. But showcasing sort of standard parts of the experience of playing 40k uh, while also trying to limit the number of types of units in your army as much as possible while focusing on teaching them the game. That's, I think, really where you have to be with new players. And if you know you have a game with a new player, uh, maybe instead of doing what many of us would normally do before a game of 40k, which is to spend a little bit of time reviewing our own new unique list and data cards and stratagems and plans. Instead, if you can, especially while everything is still free on the app, like have your opponent send you your list, look at their stuff, show up to the game knowing what their stuff does so that you can help them. And so that's what I've got. Uh, just to wrap up, we're going to say competitive 40K is trying to win the game before it starts. Casual 40K is making sure the game is decided at the table and uh, everybody's just having a, a 
good time with what's happening there. It can still be tactical. It can still be, quote, a competition in some sense. Um, but it's decided after the game starts. And then newbie 40K, newbie casual 40K is not really a competitive experience at all, even a casual competitive experience. It really is about teaching. And in any case, if you are playing at the more casual end of the hobby, uh, make sure that your your opponent has a lot of stuff. You have a lot of stuff in your list that your opponent can kill, that you're not running things that they can't kill. Definitely that they're not going to be any gotcha moments. And uh, leave home the really game-changing, powerful units. And if you can, a thematic list that tells a story at the table. I think that is the best way for everybody to have fun in, in, a, in casual 40K at a time when space elves, if they so choose, can be a terror to behold at the table that is making real strides towards reestablishing that old Eldari empire. So that's what I've got. If you have your own ideas about how to build casual Eldari list, lists or to make the game fun for new players, consider leaving those ideas in the comments below. Also, like any comments help my algorithm, so please say something if there's anything to say, even if it's just hello. If you have not liked the video, I hope you will like it. If you have not subscribed, I hope that you will subscribe. I'm going to come up with something clever to do to celebrate when I get to 10,000 subscribers. I don't know what it is yet. My uh, Discord members. Um, if you join my Patreon, ah, you will become part of the Discord. And my Discord uh, members have been suggesting all kinds of things we could do when um, we hit 10,000. So if you have ideas about that, you could also leave those in the comments below. And if you do want to become a subscriber, I obviously would appreciate it. I will link that in the video description. I will be back soonish with something new and interesting. If you have preferences on what that is, please feel free to also let me know that. Okay. Thanks guys. Good luck with your pointy ears. Best wishes in all your games, whether they be competitive, casual, or teaching experiences. Take care. Bye.